This webcast recording is from Saturday, November 12, 2016, during Designers for Learning's Education Impact Day, a 12 hour webcastathon to explore one important question What impact will you make? During this interview, we speak with Eugene Couch, Associate Professor at the University of Calgary and President of AECT, the Association for Educational Communication and Technology. Eugene joins us in our 12th and final hour of the 12-hour webcast and helps us to celebrate the day's journey with his wonderful sense of humor and disco lights. This is the, definitely the last session. I want you to tell us in the 12th hour of our webcast, um, tell us what, what we aren't doing as a field that we should be doing and what we are doing that we should stop. I love that question. Would you mind tackling that one? Oh yeah, sure. I, I thought you were half asleep. That was supposed to be. That's not a softball, as you. It is. Here. No, it's not. What we need to be doing as a profession? Well, you know, I spent my whole life looking at ed tech. I'm, I'm a dyed in the wool design guy, but I decided years ago that I didn't like unsustainable projects. And why? The, I wrote a question down. And it's so good, Jared. Jared made me think, he said, his next big question is how do we simplify the user experience with Canvas? And I got thinking, my life's work is how do we simplify the education system's experience with learning technologies? So why does it have to be so hard? How can our people be more involved? How do we support startups and innovations? I mean, really be flexible, like with amazing things like designers for learning and uh, all sorts of stuff you know how do how do we support our people our work our universities our field um i i think that's the next that's the next big challenge is developing a sense of who we are in today's world not yesterday's world not according to the old definitions but, but according to what's necessary and you've had so many interesting people today talking about the issues of authenticity and and connectivity and learners connected and I'm wondering how do we connect to each other a little bit more strongly uh, a little more regularly we had a thousand people at the conference ACT conference but there's lots of conferences and work like you're doing here as a group gives us a chance I think to to get together and have conversations like today. I can't tell you the last time I, I had to come in and out because I had actually another conference running, but I'm thinking, okay, uh, how, do, how often do we talk like this about these issues and how do we turn it into traction? Like you were talking to Jared about how do you, how do you build a resort, build a resource and enterprise that's growing? Uh, someone else talked about, you know, turning uh, an NGO into a, not a, I think she used the word profitable, but I, I'm thinking sustainable. Because if you don't have enough resources coming in, it's it's you can't do this stuff free. We're 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 a lot of free people in a billion trillion dollar enterprise, and it doesn't make sense anymore. And we've got to grow up. And I don't know how exactly, but it's stuff like what you're doing and some of the people today are doing. I think that's the future. There's a long answer. Yeah, I think so too. And your example, I think you were talking about Lisa. Um, they found a way. They give away a lot of stuff, but then they uh, brand. You know, they let people. What do they call it? White label or whatever. Um, their platform, and then they they charge for that. So you know, here's our standard stuff that's free, and and then if you want to take it to the next, and I, you know, that's one example. But it, it's like you said, the sustainability, and and your point exactly. She talked a lot about we got a grant to get things kicked off, but then something's got to keep the engine running, uh, you know, fuel in the engine <laughs> after the, the grant runs out. I'm also, I'm also in my previous career as a business guy. A, a way to a way to keep a sustain an uh, a startup thriving is um, to enter into partnerships. So there's some performance requirement for everybody, even the NGO. So maybe we could partner with somebody. Um, what I'm trying to do very hard, and I have any ideas anyone has, please tell me. I'm, you know, president elect for ACT means I'm a big conference planner guy with uh, Linda Campion. And we're, we've got new themes and streams we're trying to figure out for the first time in, uh, for, for the first time in forever. Uh, we're trying to get military, corporate, and some practice in and get some hard technologies back, some wizardry. Some of those people into our mix and say, okay, there's got to be a way we can, we can engage people who, healthcare, 
who are spending billions and have lots of us working embedded in their buildings all the way how could we get together and have these conversations you know and, and maybe when i'm sure I, i've always had this experience when people meet good designers really good people like our, you're involved with jennifer and the people in this conference they can we can hook up and there's most often more opportunity than we can handle so but we just need to find ways to show them you know we'll get in for the short term we'll do a freebie we'll do something neat and then maybe we can be part of your long-term effort as well without losing who we are you know as an as an ngo so you know that's a thought and i'm not sure how we can put it together but i know act is willing to try to help yeah and i, I did such an, uh, a poor job of uh we just were so excited with our disco balls <laughs> Like having a glass of wine, I'm, I apologize. I did not do a formal introduction for you, but one thing I do want to make sure everyone, we've talked all day long. I think every, almost nearly every th session we've mentioned AECT. Um, and so that's the Association for Educational Communication and Technology. Is that right? Yes, it is. I'm sorry, it is. It's the oldest premier society of educational technology in the world. And it's hard not to be as old. Yes. And so um, you are the president elect, is that right? So you'll be um, you'll be president the next year. President next year. So so for everyone that has heard us talk all day long about AECT, here's our fearless leader. <laughs> well, one of them, one of them, yeah. And I'm I'm learning a lot. We, and we've got 13 countries that are affiliate members that have over 8,000 members within these affiliates, and some of them are thriving. Like I just went and talked in Bangkok and. They have, they have uh, I mean, Taiwan has 8,000 members, um, and uh, many of them dealing with MOOCs. There's a million MOOCs launched last year in Japan alone. I met the guy who's part of that. It's wild what's going on in Southeast Asia. They're all looking for what we know already, and, uh, and they have the same interests and the same concerns in K-12, actually, in the classroom. I mean, they're the same all over the world. So yeah, I think I think we could use AECT as a more effective clearinghouse for c connecting people and organizations that need our, our work and our skill and on ramping our grad students in too, I think. Yeah. The universities tend to own this stuff a little bit too much. Maybe it's up to us to connect the GSA and, and people like you too. I was just going to say, what well, I've always said, I think one of the most innovative parts of um, ACT is the GSA, just trying um, to, you know, bring people in and, and, uh, and as soon as they come in, figuring out a way, okay, that's what you're really into, that's what you want to work on, that's part of your platform, then run with it. Like, for example, the year Jason was the president of the GSA, he brought together some uh, it was Paige um, and Avon and, and uh, Wendy and I'm trying to think of anybody else I may be missing and himself. And then they were the faculty, um, or I don't know if they called them faculty sponsors, the uh, mentors, let's say. And so it was just, that was just cool. That To me, that I got the most traction from the GSA is when we first started, um, as far as their buy-in, like, yeah, we need this. And, and I just think it's a cool group to, um, you know, make sure we kind of keep them motivated as they become faculty and, and move on. And, Absolutely. ACT's got the internship program. And as I look closely at that, that's a few people, you know, out of uh, 2,500 members and growing every year and all these thousands of affiliates. And I'm starting to think that if we could act as, as you know, uh, matchmakers, maybe maybe we could connect grad students with, with companies and healthcare and military sectors, perhaps even through and with uh, Designers for Learning or other groups. I'm sure students would get, they're talking about authentic experiences with you, uh, Jennifer. I've heard that all day. And we need to support that. Um, I just, it's just a, finding a way, a way to do it. It's so it's, it's, exciting. The, I, all of my research is on networking. It's all about building up organizational flexibility and capacity, taking the best of flexible design thinking and leadership organizational thinking, putting them together, look and analyze this stuff using network theory a lot. And I find that if you just get a couple people with some cool ideas in a room, something usually happens as long as there's not enough people around to say, we've never done it that way, there's no money for this, I know you can't. Find the ten reasons, <laughs> and, and that's just the, they just work. awful. I know, and it's like your, your evidence today that 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 really shouldn't be going on. So I'm racking my brain, and I'm encourage everyone 
and you especially to keep talking to to places like ACT. We need to partner with ISTE and a whole bunch of other people too to do interesting things as a network, not as an owner. <laughs> and I think that's that's a new gesture that I know I'm having a whopper of a time explaining to um, older executive people, but they're they're into it and they know it's necessary. We're, and these millennials are going to show us the way. I think. I'm listening to Jared Stein, I thought, you know, there it is, right there. Do a pilot, throw it out there, take a shot, see what happens, and don't get all hung up about it. You don't have to publish it in a tier one journal for it to be effective. Right, so, right. Uh, although we have those journals, and we can, we can. I want to also in, c connect the GSA better to the working world so that we can publish practical things as well as theoretical things much quicker. I'm on the board of uh, BJET, the British Journal of Education Technology with BERA. Their clientele is Europe and Asia, and I'm quite familiar with their perspective in ETR and D. There's a lot of places to publish and help academic careers. And if people are okay to disclose, if they want to go academic or practical or both, why not do the work partner up and publish it in whatever journal best fits. And I know our editors are more than willing to take the newest, greatest stuff. Wendy's got a disco ball there. That is better than my I LED light bulb. Look, look at that. Where? In her picture. Oh, I can't see it. Where is she? Oh, it's where, what I'm seeing is the names of everyone. Eric's okay. got his dog. Jessica's got her and her Special yeah. thing in there, and there's Wendy's got a disco ball graphic. Quite cool. I can't see it. Oh, I'm, I'm I, all I see for Wendy is Wendy with her picture, just her profile. Oh, and look at that! Somehow, Wendy's a magician. Oh, he said he popped out. She switched. She popped out to switch out. Okay, so she must have. Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> that's cool. Um, so um, yeah, I'm babbling, but uh, that's a wrong answer to your question. Well, we had a question, but I think it's now out of context. Diane asked a question, are we talking about learning technology for students or instructors? And it was a while ago, um, it was about 10 minutes ago, so I don't really recall where we were. Do you might remember where? Maybe, Diane, if you could give us some context. <clears throat> Excuse me, in the, in the text chat, because I'm not sure what that was. Um, I wasn't watching the text chat, and the amazing Jason Ingerman here, who is like good, ever ready batteries is usually able to pull all this together on plans to authentic careers yeah that would be good action oh yeah jason is actually working on one of these cool ideas. there he is one of these cool ideas to involve school districts in, and people of ex with expertise to problem solve and that's David Jonasson got me in a corner one week. I'll never forget that. Then he said, this is the future. It's problem solving. It's this, it's that, and it's connecting people. I thought that's exactly what my research is. That's what Jason is attempting to set up. Allie's talk about um, uh, not the, the um, uh, public uh, intellectualism and public uh, intellectualism. It all fits together. You know, we just have to get out of our boxes. We have to have deep disciplinary knowledge like we do, but we've got to loosen it up a bit. And Jason's got a model for that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, Diane gave some context. Um, she was saying, referring to the ease of use of technology, I think that's when we were talking about that. And she was saying, oh, that's a great point. Are you talking about learning technology, ease of use for students or for the instructors? Probably, I put words in your mouth, probably both, right? Yeah, for them. And, and because the ad administrative world understands technology as information, and enterprise analytic systems in the school districts and schools and in the governments of the world. I think we need to be a little closer to our IT partners who are creating the big buildings, the black boxes that hold the LMSs, that control the networks, that, that control the funding and the budgets. We need to be a little closer to the, to the leadership who resource IT for everybody, including the business of education, and the learning side. I think I've seen a lot of real interesting work on that. So chief learning officers, chief information officers, chief technology officers now at Google, who can connect our fields. Interdisciplinary work, I think, Yeah, is, you know, is really going to be uh, Yeah. Um, you were talking about some of the themes from, um, from earlier that would scare, um, scare a lot of 
folks. <laughs> and one that really comes to mind is, um, is some of the, talk, the conversation from Mimi. I don't know if you were able to watch um, any of that from Mimi Ito, but the idea that um, looping in, uh, I, I should call them the affinity-based net mentorships where it's peer-to-peer -peer mentorships. And so a lot of the things that we talked about today, pretty much I could go through almost everybody's talk and, and all these out-of-the-box ideas um, it is hard when you think about taking it to scale. You know, people don't like to fail and then certainly don't want to fail on a big stage. Um, and probably that ties in in what Jared was saying is just find a way to try it and to prototype it and, and call it a prototype. And, um, and then maybe it's not quite so scary if you fail at a prototype versus, you know, something that's really yeah. out there. You know, I remember as a, as a junior designer working for Baker Hughes, which is an oil uh, service company, I was doing that while I did my undergrad degrees. I thought, okay, uh, I've got to do something fast. It can't be too picky. So I got Ryguth and Pollock's book off the shelf, and I had read Bar Bickelmeyer stuff on rapid prototyping. And I thought, okay, I can. Now you'd call this hacking, Jason. You call. Right. I've got to hack this because right. you know the client. You know, my ridiculous time frame and say, we're going to kill you if you don't do this properly. And I thought, or oh, you'll never work in this town again. And it was Dallas. So I thought, okay, fine. No. <laughs> but I, uh, uh, sorry, Dallas. You folks, but I, I <laughs> love Dallas. But I thought, okay, uh, let's, let, let's do this. So I jam, jam something together. Popular, they ended up patenting million dollars, and I thought, you know, I, I, that was a, that was a hack. You know, we should be getting a piece of that. But of course, I didn't think that way then. And I think we'd better be a little more business minded about some of this. Watch the inputs, how much you're putting in, how much you're getting out. Make sure you can feed the cat at the end of the day. Right, and right. Invest in the business, and that, that's got to be part of our thinking. I think now we're getting exploited really badly by big systems that are inefficient. And because I study leadership, I see our folks working real hard to provide enormous value, but it's unseen. It's unappreciated. That's why the theme for Jacksonville, <clears throat> the the uh, AECT conference, is leading learning for change. Step up and take notice of who's accountable for what. We all do learning. And it's change. What are you impacting? What do you want to? What aren't you? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Let's get that out in the surface out front. So leading learning for change. Join us in Jacksonville. I had to put the I was just going to say, let, and maybe that's a great way for us to like uh, segue out of the evening because I'll, I'll let everybody go back to their okay. real lives. <laughs> but but like, okay. tell us a little bit about um, what, what, are the, what are the plans for Jacksonville? Um, well, right now, I've got a, a couple keynotes lined up. I'm hoping to get a strong woman leader who's on the Dean's Commission for the entire United States, uh, a very, a very, very powerful thinker in systems thinking, and not systems theory that we've taken till we're going to die, like Rogers and company, but systems thinking, how you think about things as a systems person. And you'll think more about the guy beside you and the gal that's following you than you will about your own work by the end of his talk. So that'll be neat. We're hoping to get someone from the uh, NATO command training for military, uh, people who train people to take care of all of us in ways we never imagined. So I'm hoping for that. And a person in healthcare who's just going, who's the head of a, a private public healthcare partnership that employs over 1,200 designers all over the world. Uh, and maybe with somebody from Daimler Chrysler, who is corporate, who uh, handles the driverless car training program, because the biggest problem they've got in driverless cars is getting education systems to understand you're not going to learn driver you're not going to take driver training the way you used to mm -hmm. that's that's going to be a huge social problem and they can't sell the cars until people are comfortable that they can learn to drive them right isn't this interesting so yeah. maybe those are the kind of people we'll have talking to us a little that's bit awesome. of, and that's you know, the 2007, right? So that will be October of 2017? Right? November 2017 in Jacksonville, Florida. November. Okay, so it's November. I thought they used to be in, well, this year was October because it was ahead a little bit, right? In, um, yep. Okay, so November 2000. So then, uh, um, one thing we definitely then need to ma mention as far as this is when people should start keeping an eye out for the um, proposal uh, deadlines. Those are usually. December 6th. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Coming so out December sixth. Is that'll be not the that's when the the RFP will be put out. Is that right? And then usually it'll be put out. And then February sixth, I think, is the deadline for submissions. We're also having video proposals this year for video uh, sessions at the event, kind of TED TED type stuff. Okay. We approach TED, and the TED process is wow. It's it's complicated. Uh -huh. so we can't pull that off in under two years. So we're going to try that as well. Also, I'm, I'm hoping that Designers for Learning will have a special place at the conference to talk to everybody about service, service learning and, uh, and action type stuff, Jason. So any ideas you have, you send them on in. There's going to be a new line of not just presidential sessions, but <laughs> focus sessions that we're going to be shifting people to. And, I think uh, um, I'm with you that I think there's a, a service learning is definitely um, a topic that a lot of people clearly I mean we the reason we yeah. now have MOOCs is because we started to when we first started out we would do a call for volunteers thinking we'd get 12 people and suddenly we were turning away you know 60 people the year that the GSA did it that was probably in Wendy's on the call right now and, and Jason, um, probably the most painful part of doing that is we had to go through and tell people they couldn't participate. Um, and so that was the most um, probably eye opening to all of us is that we had far more interest than we were able to handle under our own, our old format. So um, yeah, um, two thumbs up for service learning as being, you know, something that we could absolutely bring, bring to the conversation. Also in your, in your network of people like today, if you have a, people who have ideas of how to engage people, not during the conference maybe, but all year, we're interested. We tried streaming things this year and 26 people attended online. It's just not, it's not a millennial thing. And we know we're not catching that. So if people have ideas. I have an idea for this event. I just learned this because I've been in the distance world in my own professional life since I started as a prof, what, 13 years ago? And uh, one thing I've learned with time zones is you can think of it as a relay. Yeah, it's a global relay. You can have, you can mark it in one time zone only and have a bunch of people and a host in that time zone and then hand it off to another time zone and still keep and, and then you don't feel like you guys feel right now. And we do this sometimes with conferences. It's touchy, but it's a thought. Think of regional uh, time zone, not national boundaries, yeah. and, and handing off the um, awesome moderator responsibilities <laughs> to, uh, to that others. That is fantastic. Okay, so then basically you would say, okay, we're going to have an 8 o'clock conference, but it's 8 o'clock. Like, it could be 12 sessions all starting at 8 o'clock in that time zone where it's originating. Is that kind of the idea, what you're saying? Like, it, it basically is like one, is that what you mean? You can, well, it depends how good you are. You can line up the same talent to speak in different time zones. They'll speak uh -huh. twice, uh -huh. you know, but they'll be, they won't have to attend the whole day, of course, in right. the whole time zones. and they have the option, but you, you kind of, yeah, and you you label it like this is this is going to be from Spain to Dubai. You know. It's okay, so rather than thinking about it in terms of times, it's more thinking of it in zones. Is that right? It's zones. Yeah, think think in terms of zones, and then you hand off zone to zone, and it it can work. I've been in a I couple of medical conferences. Yeah, and it it saves you this enormous problem of having to span the world uh, in real time. I'm shocked how many um, people hung out. We had people from the UK, France, South awesome. Africa, Australia, and I, that I blew me away. I, you know, J Jason and I kind of joked. We were calling it our, and I'm putting in quotes, air quotes, the uh, global conference, and it actually was. <laughs> we really did. Yeah. We really yeah. did have uh, folks. Well, thank you for bringing us home. Here, cheers to well, you. I tried to spick. I tried to spork it up. Cheers to all. <laughs> you did. You got us. Oh, we got. We got our disco balls going. Well, we had the children on the screen, and I thought perhaps I'll bring milk. I'm not sure. Or or uh, cocoa. Since I didn't get to drink with any of you. At <laughs> oh, that's great, Eric. Oh, I love you. Here, cheers. So everybody who's listening, Eric is um the person who designed a big chunk of module one in the MOOC. So if you're taking the MOOC. Uh, you can thank or blame, <laughs> whichever your perspective is. <laughs> and Eric's not nearly busy enough in his own career, right? Oh, yeah. you're looking at you guys. Okay. Exactly. Congrats,
That's what I say about everybody who volunteers with us. I'm like, you, as though you don't have enough, you know, with your family and when work commitments. And well, that's why I cried. You weren't there, Eugene, but Eric got me crying at the. Yes, I did. I was embarrassed. Well, we we did. We received the um, outstanding um, practice award from for D and D, and so they had a session where we got to do like a ten minute overview. And so I was like, well, this is a collaborative project. We'll do a collaborative acceptance. And so I just kind of kicked it off. And then I, I think I just had a very. It was a very innocuous prompt. It was just like, well, can you tell? Um, like why you feel this is an important project or something like that. I can't remember what it was. So right away, John uh, Baki said something and I'm like starting to get choked up. And then by the time we got to Eric, what did you say? I met friends and potential like research part or writing part collaborators. <laughs> Here, do you want me to make you cry again? Yeah, please go. I, I, I was trying to avoid it so I don't start crying again. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you something, something else. Um, and um, I, I don't know if you've gotten the news or not in Canada. Um, we had an election here, Eugene. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, without going to power tonight, watching it. Oh, so you heard. <laughs> you have heard. You have yeah. heard. I also learned from CNN about data visualization, how powerful that can be um, from CNN. <laughs> without going too far into it, um, you know, some people are feeling like they want to um, have some way to contribute, um, volunteer, take action, um, and do something. And I'm so grateful that I have a way to volunteer and do something that I know how to do and do well, and be able to give that back to society. Oh, I'm really, I gotta get my tissues I'm really out again. Glad. <laughs> and, and I, before this, I didn't have an option to do that, right? Like, I could be a teacher, but I was getting paid to do that, and that's fine. But this, this is something different, right? This is something unique. Um, so, are you crying again? Wow. Yeah, yeah, I am. Cheers. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> so I mean, you'd never guess. Like, I wouldn't guess of all the group, you would be the one that would, like, tug at the heartstrings. I was like, oh, oh my gosh, where did this come? And now you've for, for our whole day, you brought it home for it. Well, thank you so much, Eric, for, for your comments and your participation and summarizing, summarizing the experience for all of us, I think. It's just been... You know, we talk, we talk and we study endlessly. Engagement, 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 teamwork, 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 community, community. You know, my work is like, I'm going to scream if I see people use those words again. but Because it's not real. I don't see it very often. I see it words. And, and I think we're seeing that in our politics, too. And what you're saying is the core of a very strong something, an entity. When people feel this way, that emotional connection, it, I feel the same way about some other things, almost about ACT most days. But as I see <laughs> potential. There are days, I tell you. Oh, but other days, it's like, okay, same thing. So, you know, maybe we should capture this, too. Why don't you, if you ever get a chance to write it up or present it, Talk about the emotional and intellectual engagement that pushes you forward as a team. That's new. You're the only one in the world doing this. That oh, would no, be we're not. no, we're not. I, I, I got a feeling you're the, you're <laughs> no, one of no, very no. few. You're one of few. So keep keep that in mind. Don't don't lose the moment, even though it's kind of hard to talk about. Maybe maybe drag it out of the conference or something. Well, we, um, I remember in our first session, and I'll try not, to, I'll try to get through without getting too choked up, but I think our first design meeting, Eric, you, you would probably remember, I said, you know, we're all coming together as strangers, and I, I guarantee, based on what we were trying to build, you know, it's kind of audacious, really, to think we're going to take a, a tw what were we, Jason, the first, the third cohort, like 12, 12 students we invited, and we're like, okay, we're going to go on Canvas Network and take as many that will walk in the door. So you kind of know right away, well, if we pull this off, will either hate each other or love each other at the end and go, you know, that was the worst experience or the best experience. So I think it, you know, you kind of do get in the trenches with each other and we all wanted to make it work. So it, it worked. So thank you again. And that's, that's what keeps Canvas going. That's, that's what's, it, talk to Silicon Valley. You'll hear the same things from the people at the start. You will. Not after they get big rich like really yeah, rich. we aren't we aren't big and rich yet <laughs> no when you get rich you'll start you'll start <laughs> going, <"Whoa." laughs> we've got we still got our, our you know two dollar or twenty dollar disco lights 
Well, thank you to everybody who joined us today. Jason, any final words for my, my partner in crime, who I love very much? He's my, he's my nephew, though. <laughs> old enough it's to true. be his mother, so unfortunately, he's my nephew. You don't look a big pass 40 at all. 49? So I, I don't 40, think he's 40 49. 40. <laughs> um, so I think a, a big a big cheers goes to Jen for being the founder of this incredible oh, idea that has moved a lot of people, I think. And um, she's done an incredible job and lots of, lots of, lots of hard work and dedication and passion put into this. So I want to thank you for that. Um, and all these great people that have joined us today. We, we just kind of had a simple idea to get people together in one space and have a meaningful conversation uh, so that we could push this agenda forward that's powerful, you know, um, as Eric has already said. So I'm going to kind of leave it there. Yeah, it's hard to beat <laughs> that. Hard to beat what he said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, first, I think the final thing I'm going to say is this is now an annual event. This was Education Impact 2016 edition. So we're, we'll look forward to the 2017 uh, edition. And maybe we'll do the relay concept that Eugene mentioned. So thanks everybody, have a great night. Thanks everyone, you did fantastic. Well, there's Wendy. <laughs> I see I really was here. You can <laughs> I, there. I kept trying to drag you in. So. I know. Yeah, you know, I do have a camera. I just didn't have it plugged in. So I thought, oh, I don't want to go and talk oh. about my dissertation. Jen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'll talk to you about it offline, though. I will. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> well, thanks. Because it is done. <laughs>